What's up, everybody? It's BDF44. Think about Westbrook and places he would possibly fit. I've been trying to figure it out. My view of Russell Westbrook, I've previously said, basically, he's the type of player who has to control everything. Everything. And the problem is he's a volume shooter with bad percentages. And he's even bad from the free throw line at this point. He's gotten progressively worse as season's gone on. I don't really know where to send him. But I've heard some suggestions, and the one place that really does make sense to me is the Detroit Pistons. And the reason why the Detroit Pistons make sense is because you already have one incredibly humongous contract in Blake Griffin that you'll never, ever be able to move. Um, So you can pair that with another one of similar length and then just let them play that thing out. You know, and that's that makes sense from a, a a front office standpoint. And when you're dealing with Russell Westbrook's contract, you can't start with the fit on the floor first because there's two things you have to be aware of. The first thing is anything that you try to bring him to, any team that you try to bring him to must be depleted in order for him to be acquired, which makes it very interesting from even Detroit because... As far as I'm concerned, Drummond would have to be involved in that contract. And then you have to find other, I mean, in that trade. And then you have to find other contracts that match that are not Blake Griffin's. He may end up getting swapped for Blake Griffin, being that Blake Griffin is from OKC himself. So that might make sense. And that that would definitely be something Blake Griffin would welcome in theory. But the thing about that is the only reason why Detroit should do something like that is because you compare him with Blake Griffin. So if you're not pairing him with Blake Griffin and you're just bringing in a horrible contract, I'd rather have Blake Griffin's horrible contract than Russell Westbrook's because I think Blake Griffin is a more um, effective piece at this point. And that's saying something because this is a Russell Westbrook who won uh, MVP a couple years ago, but what you're trying to consider is who can help you win. Uh, who Who is the guy that you want to build around? And quite frankly, uh, if I got to take on a bad contract, I'm building around Blake Griffin a more fluent basketball player who's going to pass the rock, shoot it, pull down boards, bigger body. I'm going to trust him over Russell Westbrook, who we know has one speed and one speed only, and that's super fast, and he's not considering just about anything. He's like a he's like Kobe Bryant in that regard. He's not really considering passing the rock. Um, head down, shoot. Head down, drive. Head down, and, and a lot of times it just doesn't convert into anything positive. Then on the other end, he's not very good defensively, uh, which makes it even worse. So I really do believe the game may have passed Russell Westbrook up. I really do. I think that I think he is not able to reel it in. I don't think he's able to to. How do you say this, man? I, he just doesn't play smart. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. He does a lot of things a, a lot of the time. So it's like if. In terms of volume, nobody could take on more of a load than him. But it's just the stuff that he chooses to do and win. It just doesn't make a lot of sense for him to play the way that he does sometimes. Just jacking up shots at the most inopportune angles and the most inopportune times. I mean, and he does this consistently. Now, when he's on, he's on. And we know, statistically, he is a system all to himself. But at the same time, it's like if you're talking about bringing him into a team or even trying to put a blank canvas around him, he's already 30, what, one and showing signs of aging. I don't want to build around that dude and that ridiculous contract. He's going to be making forty seven million dollars at 40 at 34 years of age. That is not good when you consider he's already showing those signs. So while I respect Russell Westbrook and what he's done, he's fun to watch. I just don't see any reason to bring his contract into my situation if I'm just about any team in the league except for Detroit. But they got to make the trade work, and I just I have to see how that would line up. I don't know. Why would you give away picks if you're Detroit? Like, Do you have any left after trading for Blake Griffin? I don't remember what that deal was like, but I'd imagine it wasn't pretty. In regards to assets, um, what happens now? Do you get to the 
Eastern Conference second round? Is that what, is that the is that the the aim here? Because um, you're not even the sixth or seventh best duo in the league if you pair Russell Westbrook and Blake Griffin together and just and and try to just fill in the roster after that. This ain't Anthony Davis and LeBron James. You're looking at a a very difficult situation if you're talking about depleting your assets and then maxing yourself all the way out uh, with those two players but they do make you they keep you relevant they will be fun to watch they'll both have a chip on their shoulder and um, you know that that can make some good eastern conference play and it is the east anything can happen out back east Um, when you look at all the teams that they have I, I can't think of a team out there that really excites me uh, maybe Philadelphia. I like Atlanta low key. I think they could be the breakout team of the Eastern Conference. But there's nobody out there that makes me say, "Oh my goodness." I mean, the Boston Celtics have. Um, I think they made some lateral moves. I don't think they're any better, or any worse than they were last year. Pretty much the same. Um, so, so for, from that perspective, you look at what Detroit can do if you do that, and you say, "Well, shoot, we have as good a chance as anybody." Miami's okay. You know, they brought in Jimmy Butler. And they're also rumored to be taking on uh, consideration for Russell Westbrook. That could be interesting. But at the same time, it's like, again, you're capping yourself out with two players. Are those the two players that are going to get you where you want to go? And can your fan base accept the fact that you're going to have Russell Westbrook making astronomical amounts of money? Three years from now, you're going to want to stretch that out. You're going to want to trade that contract or something. And it's not going to be possible. So, Yeah. Westbrook to Detroit is what I'm expecting. I mean, if Detroit dares take on that contract and pair it with Blake Griffin, if they swap for one another, it's absolutely asinine. I, I would never understand that. I've heard Russell Westbrook being rumored to go to the Rockets. I think that that's a disaster of catastrophic proportions, and it's kind of odd to say that because the reason why is because I don't think Westbrook and Harden can play with each other. It's weird because they have played with one another. In fact, they've played in the NBA Finals team together. So that might, just might, have some potential. But the problem is, Harden made it work because he was having much of a lesser role on that team. He was a younger player. He didn't have all these these incredible skills that he he now possesses. And most importantly, he's used to having the ball in his hands 100% of the time. So there's really no way for them to both be comfortable on the floor together now, in theory. But there's something to be said for synergy, and those players have had synergy in their careers in this league, on this level, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, maybe they can make it work. But the question is, why the heck would they? You know, they're they're not better than their old team because Kevin Durant obviously isn't there, and they would never, ever be able to get better taking on that contract, coupling it with... Uh, James Harden. Now, some would say you'd much rather have Russell Westbrook's contracts than CP3's, but I mean, I I, I don't know if I'm being completely honest because CP3's a more of a fluent player. He's going to pass the rock. He's going to fit in your system. He's going to you you put great players around CP3, and he's still going to be super effective. Um, If you put him on this Laker team right now, we're shooting. We're going straight past the Clippers. I'm telling you right now. I know that's not possible, but. In a in his perfect world, he only signed a one year contract with an opt out or two year contract with an opt out, and then we could try to go get him next year uh, with with a, with much less money. But you know, I think there's a conversation that needs to be had for players when they take on big contracts. Yes, you don't want to turn down money, but at the same time, the way the game's set up, you're going to want to be in better situations, and you don't want to be Blake Griffin or Russell Westbrook or or, or any of those in these type of situations where you're getting traded around. Luckily enough for Paul George, it worked out for him because he signed a long contract and ended up where he wanted to go. But, I mean, that that's rare. <laughs> you know, a lot of times you sign these contracts, and I heard D'Lo say this today, you know, it's a business. You think you're going to stay somewhere for a long period of time, and you end up getting moved midway through the contract. You know, that's just the reality of the situation. So, if anything, I would say these guys need to really consider if locking up makes the most sense. You know, we saw it with John Wall. He's lucky. He's happy. But it's terrible for the franchise. You know, and Dame Lillard, he, as long as he continues playing on this level, it's wonderful. I think he can outplay his contract in some ways. But 
you locked him up. If he goes down with a couple injuries, suddenly you have the worst contract in the Western Conference. Like, it's just the risk that both players and teams take on when you when you sign on for longer deals. So, Russell Westbrook's in that boat, and I think it's it's a safe bet that he doesn't win a championship within the next four years. You know, I, I don't know where where he can find himself after that contract expires. Maybe he can hop along a, a team or something and, and find himself in a lucky situation. We've seen players do that in the past. I mean, I remember Mitch Richmond winning a championship with the Lakers like, at the end of his career. It can happen. But as far as him being the man or being the second option on a championship squad, I think he pretty much just um, he signed, he signed that opportunity away with his last contract or this existing contract, I should say. And... Um, it's hard to find a fit, you know, a player like that. And that's, I think that should be the rule of thumb going forward. Even though you want to secure yourself. Um, so I, I, it's hard to argue and against, it's hard to argue against securing yourself with, with a long contract. But if you want to fit on a team, you want to extend your career as best you can with winning opportunities and your legacy and all that, just, just sign one ones every year, dude. Don't, don't lock up until the end. Like LeBron did, sign one and ones. Is that way you leave yourself flexibility to get out of situations as they change, uh, and and you allow yourself to stay on teams that actually fit? Because eighty two games, let's just be honest, eighty two games is too damn long to be on a bad team, man. It just is. That's a long year. Even if you're making a hundred million dollars or whatever, that's a long year, dude. You don't want to be in a cold weather city or even a good city on a bad team. It's just a miserable waste of year. So in my opinion, if you type of player, you can get that same money by signing one and ones. Sign your one and ones. Leave yourself opportunities, and if and the best case scenario is, you continue to play at the highest level, and teams continue to bring you back. So I mean, the risk to that, of course, is injuries. But even if you get injured, you know, and, and you lock up with all this money, you kissing your career goodbye. You better love money more than you love your legacy. Or you're going to end up like Westbrook and Blake Griffin. And so, I mean, for a lot of people, that's a no-brainer. Of course, it's the money, right? But for some, it's actually about basketball. You can see for guys like Kawhi Leonard, it's about competing. You know, the the money comes second. So if you're one of those guys and you you love the game like that, I mean, there has to be a sacrifice somewhere. Um, So that's my opinion. Uh, I'm not certain what I would do in those situations. If I were blessed enough to be an athlete, uh, I would I would understand it to be a very difficult balance. Try to figure out what's best for myself and my family. But at the end of the day, there's two sides to this. You could be Blake Griffin, not so happy with your contract, or you could be John Wall and thanking God you signed it. So that's what I have to say, man. Hopefully it works out for Russell Westbrook. And that's ex- pretty much all I got to say. Take care, everybody. Peace.